It was an exciting weekend for Towson women's soccer as they were playing for the right to advance to the CAA tournament, but first they had to win two games. We have highlights from both those matches. Later in the show, we have highlights from field hockey's battle with Hofstra. Did the Tigers have enough to overcome the pride? We'll tell you about it later on. Plus, we'll be joined in studio by the head coach of the women's soccer team, Greg Painter. Sit back and relax as Tiger 411 starts now. Hello Tiger faithful and welcome back to another edition of your favorite weekly show, Tiger 411. I'm your host, Zach Maskovich. As you heard me say in the intro, this past weekend was crucial for the women's soccer team as they were on the verge of their first ever CAA tournament appearance. But they needed to take care of business at home when they hosted back-to-back -back games on Friday and Sunday. Friday afternoon, the Tigers welcomed, welcomed in CAA newcomer Elon into the Tigers soccer complex. The Tigers looking to remain unbeaten in their final three matches, most recently coming off a 2-2 draw with the Drexel Dragons. We pick up the action in the first half. Tigers on the attack. Sophia Reed racing down the far sideline. Gets off a shot, but as you can see, that was a tough angle for the senior. Goes just wide, and the game remains scoreless for now. And still in the first half, Katie Ponce making a good run. She's going to fire from distance, able to beat the Elon keeper for the goal. What a strike from Ponce on her team leading sixth goal of the year. The Tigers jump out to an early one to nothing lead over Elon. We move to the second half now. Tigers still in control up one to nothing. Natalia Pinckney going to get the ball, takes it down in the corner, tries to cross it for Holly Garber, but it's just out of Garber's reach. And Kate Murphy scoops it up easily for the Phoenix. Minutes later the Tigers on the attack again showing some nice ball movement here Emily Marshall sets up Reed at the top of the box but Reed just misses putting the ball on frame Towson still holding on to the one goal advantage and hey what's a soccer highlight without showing the Tigers star goalie Aaron Quinn Quinn making it look easy on the direct free kick from Elon making one of her two saves on the day moments later the Tigers are back on the attack Gabby Sirica races down the near sideline she's going to get past her defender gets down low blasts a pass to Morgan Frakowski who puts it top shelf for the goal Frakowski's first goal of the year and it puts the Tigers up two to nothing over Elon what a moment for the Tigers senior Morgan Frakowski and that's all the Tigers would need as they take down the Elon Phoenix by a two to nothing final Towson now just one win away from a CAA tournament berth standing in their way CAA powerhouse the William and Mary tribe the Tigers have never beaten this Tribe team in the history of the program. It sure would be sweet to pick up a win in this game. Not only the last home game of the year, but the last game of the year. So it is senior day. The Tigers would honor their seniors after the game. The Tigers came out of the gate swinging. Natalia Pinkney again shows off her speed, stays with the play, blasts a laser into the top right-hand corner. That shot was Pinkney's third goal of the year, and the Tigers were not done there. William & Mary, however, going to try to answer back a few few minutes later, still in the first half, we're going to see Lacey Irvin hit an amazing ball into Barbara Plattenberg, but she's stonewalled by Aaron Quinn. What a fantastic play by the senior who was able to read the ball in the air and make the big save for the Tigers. We stay in the first half. The Tigers on the set piece from just inside the midfield line. Vashi Delgado hits a great ball. Marissa Green able to get ahead on it, puts it in the back of the net. Green's second goal of the year. The Tigers now up two to nothing, and they have a bit of a cushion to work with here against the Tribe as they look for their first win over William and Mary. Towson now has to hope that the clock just continues to tick away as each second off the clock is good for the Tigers. Second half now, Tigers trying to build on that lead. Katie Ponce showing off her ball handling and power as she works around her defender, rips that left-handed shot, but it's saved by Devin Peck to keep the Tigers off the board. Final 10 seconds of the game, Tribe with one final chance, but Quinn gonna punch it away right there, and it's all over. The Tigers upset William & Mary on senior day by a two to nothing final, as the Tigers advance to the CAA tournament for the first time in program history. What a special day for this Tiger team, especially the seniors who now know that they get to extend their season just a little bit longer. Great moment at the Tigers soccer complex on Sunday. 
The Tigers now travel to Hempstead, New York to battle third seeded Hofstra in the first round of the CAA tournament. And when we come back, we'll be joined in studio by the man that has led the Tigers on this great run and that first ever CAA tournament berth. That's the head coach of the women's soccer team, Greg Painter. Stick around. We'll be right back after this. Virtual Wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. Brian Vickers, Aaron's sponsored driver. He doesn't just love racing, he lives it. He got the paper! Woo! His pit crew follows him everywhere. Oddly, so does his boss. Right, right, sign that, sign that. <laughs> yeah! And his passion for racing is rivaled only by his passion for errands. No credit needed. I'll take it. Woo! Woo! Congrats. Errands makes owning easy through lease ownership, so you can own the life you want. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride. Pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. Inconceivable! I'm the king of the Thank you. Very little. Mmm. Oh. I'll have what she's having. Houston, we have a problem. You talking to me? Earmuffs! Show me the mini! Say hello to my little friend. Pepsi mini cans. Little can. Epic satisfaction. Refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Welcome back to Tiger 411. As we promised before the break, for the second straight week, the head coach of the women's soccer team here at Towson, Greg Painter, joins us. And coach, uh, thanks for stopping by after what was a very exciting weekend for you guys. Absolutely, good to be here. Now you take down Elon two to nothing on Friday. Uh, it was a game that, that your team jumped out and they just kept, they played with a lead really well, didn't allow a goal. Uh, tell me what your, your thoughts were after Friday. Well, I mean, we knew we had to win two games this weekend and uh, to get out against a team like Elon that's on the road, it's, it's tough for them to get, get going and get motivated. And we told them we needed to get a strong start and we did that, um, you know, on Friday and we're able to, you know, have a comfortable game and, and control it. So able to save some legs for, for, uh, for yesterday. And then Sunday, you come out against a William & Mary team who's a CAA powerhouse year in and year out, uh, and you come away with a 2 nothing win. Uh, when you guys jumped out with that first goal from Natalia Pinckney, uh, what was going through your mind when, when you saw that you, you got the lead that you wanted? Well, I mean, we had to keep playing. Yeah. And I think that's the, the trap you, get, you, you fall into is that, you know, uh, it, 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 no lead is safe, especially when you have a William & Mary team that's as talented as they are. and. Uh, you know, we had to, you know, continue to play well, and we got the second goal, so that really, um, you know, helped us and settled us down a lot. And on the second goal, as we saw in the highlights earlier in the show, uh, Marissa was able to just get ahead on it. It wasn't a ball that was very high because it bounced off the ground, but she did a great job adjusting to that ball and, and able to put a little bit of power on it to put it past the goalkeeper. She, she's one of our better players in the air, and uh, Vashti hit a tremendous service, and Marissa was just relentless at getting on the end of it, and, uh, you know, I think it caught 
you know, their goalkeeper a little bit by surprise, uh, which is good because she's a very good goalkeeper, and we had to do something, something special to beat her. And you did two to nothing, as we just mentioned. Uh, it was senior day. You did something a little bit different that, that you don't normally do in years past. You waited to hold senior day until after the game was over to honor uh, all the girls that would be graduating. Uh, do you think that really played into your favor to, to make sure the girls were focused on the William & Mary game and then the, the senior day became even more special because you ended up winning? Well, that, that was, um, I went to the, the, the two senior captains and asked their opinion of when they wanted to do it. And that was uh, an idea that was kind of born together with uh, you know, the staff's input and their input. And um, yeah, we, we wanted to make sure we were focused. We knew, that, um, we knew that we had to win two games and I didn't want any uh, distractions before the game. And, and they were on board with that and they were really excited about about uh, you know, having the game first and then their celebration afterwards. So not only did you guys need to win your two games this weekend, which you did, you also need Delaware to not win. Uh, they ended up falling to Hofstra 4-2. to two. Was, That game ended around halftime of your game. When were you aware that, that Delaware fell? Well, before the game started, I knew what the score was. And then, uh, you know, we, we, we tried to stay focused on the game at right. hand. You know, but, you know, we did a lot of scoreboard watching on Friday night after our game. And, and Northeastern was able to, 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 get, to come back and tie that game up, which kept us alive. And, right a lot of hope and enthusiasm for, for Sunday's game. Now, Sunday, you guys get the win. It gives you, the, as we mentioned with the Delaware loss, the first berth into the CA tournament in program history. Uh, that has to just be an, an amazing accomplishment for you guys. It is. I mean, I think the, you know, it's something that we always strive for. And you know, we, now that we're here, we, you know, we keep saying this is the second season. And now we have a chance. Um, we've got a tough road ahead of us to obviously play um, some very good teams in front of us. But we, we're ready. And we're playing well right now. We've got you know, five games in a row that we were unbeaten and we're playing some good defense and getting some, some, uh, some sporadic goals from different people. And, you know, I think our girls have a lot of confidence right now. Yeah, talk about that stretch run you guys closed the season out. You know, as you mentioned, five or six games ago, it didn't, it looked like you would need a very, very strong end of the season to even consider being uh, given a chance to play in the CA tournament. And then you guys end up going on that run. Uh, just you know, tell me about the team's mentality when, when you approached them and said, look, we really need to finish the season strong. Well, we talked about it. I mean, you know, we, we started with uh, what ends up now being the, the, the top three seeds as our first three games. And so we were 0-3 and, and we were coming home for a strong weekend. And, and we lost to Wilmington at home on that first Friday. And, you know, we were 0-4 and, and said to the team, five wins will get you in. Yeah. It turns out we didn't have to have five wins. But I knew that if we got four wins and a tie or five wins that we would be okay. Um, but you know the girls just persevered and they really stayed focused what we were trying to do and and then even when we tied Charleston which was a game that I think we should have should have gotten a better result still believed that if we put together three wins and a tie or four wins we'd get in and, and obviously we did. So you get in you find out you're going to go to Hempstead to play Hofstra uh, this coming weekend. Uh, was, Hofstra's a team you played a couple weeks ago and you guys fell one to nothing to, to the pride but they scored a goal, and, and you correct me if I'm wrong, in what I believe was the first five minutes of the game, uh, and then that, that score ended up holding throughout. So you know that, that you guys can play with this Pride team, no question about it. Oh, yeah. The, you know, the thing about Hofstra is that they're, they're also clicking right now. I mean, you know, they're a very hot team. Uh, I think they're undefeated in their last five or six games as well, and they have one of the best offenses in the country and certainly uh, one of the most prolific offenses in our conference. So, you know, we have to find a way to, to slow them down. They've got the two highest scorers in the conference, and you know, we just have to make sure that we're, we're, we're playing good defense first. And then uh, I think that we have you know, s some wrinkles in, in our, our lineup now that we didn't have the first time we played them that will create some offense for us. Now, you also you mentioned they have a, a prolific offense, but you have a pretty good goaltender yourself and, and a good defense in Erin Quinn, uh, you know, celebrating her senior day. But uh, just talk about how special she was this weekend to go put back-to-back -back shutouts and clean sheets up. Well, it's important. I mean, you know, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to win when you're giving up lots of goals. Right. And I think that, that Aaron and, and her defense in front of her have done an excellent job of not allowing anything easy. And then we know that she's good for a couple of circus saves a game. And she has the ability to be spectacular. And, and she did that when we needed her to this weekend. All right, Coach. Well, we hope she continues to do it as you can make a run into the CAA tournament. And good luck against Hofstra. Thank you. Don't go anywhere. We still have more Tiger 411 on the other side of this break. You know how fast you were going? Yeah, about 55. Where you headed at such an appropriate speed? Across the country to enhance the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. How's it working for you? Better than ever. How'd you do it? Added cell sites, increased capacity. And your point is? So you can download music, games, and directions for the road when you need them. Who's this guy? Oh, that's Charlie. You ever put pepper spray on your burrito? I like it spicy, but not like, oh, spicy. You always like this? You have no idea.
AT&T, the nation's most reliable 4G LTE network. Mariner Finance is a consumer finance company, so we offer personal loans. Mariner Finance is a great place to work. It's a great thing for anyone with the entrepreneurial spirit. Everybody in every office has an opportunity to achieve and grow. Be your own leader. Be a leader amongst uh, the fellow co-workers in your office. The training and development that we do at Mariner Finance is one-on-one. -on -one. Someone who has been there, done it, experienced it. There is no better feeling. Learn with us. Grow with us. Grow with us. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride. Pride in our city. Pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. This is where the legends live, waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Welcome back to Tiger 411. I'm your host, Zach Maskinich. Field hockey was under the lights at Johnny United Stadium on Friday as they were in search of their first home win of the year. Their opponent, the Hofstra Pride. The Tigers are coming off a very close game against Appalachian State last week and would love to pick up that first home win of the year. We're going to pick up the action in the first half with the match still scoreless until Heather Jenny slaps a shot into the back of the net and the Tigers jump out to a one to nothing lead in the first. And Jenny wasn't done there. In fact, we move to the second half now. Jenny again gets the ball, puts it in the back of the net, her second goal of the day and team leading fifth goal of the season. That cuts the pride lead to one at three to two. This was Jenny's second multi-goal game of the month as she also registered two goals against Columbia. But unfortunately for Tiger fans, it wasn't enough as the Pride come into Towson and hand the Tigers a 4-2 defeat. The Tigers then traveled to Northeastern on Sunday and they fell to the 18th ranked Huskies 3-0 up in Boston. The Tigers are back in action on Halloween when they face the Drexel Dragons at 6 o'clock p.m. So be sure to come on out and cheer on the Tigers before beginning your Halloween festivities. Admission to the game is free. For fans of basketball, Friday night was an electric atmosphere inside CQ Arena as the Tigers men's and women's basketball teams hosted a tip-off event to get fans ready for what is bound to be a fun basketball season. The event started off with both teams being introduced to the crowd as each player had their own walkout music. Dance for the crowd was a great way to start the event off. Then the students got the opportunity to compete against Tiger basketball players in a shooting contest against members of the men's and women's basketball team. The finals saw this young lady taking on A.J. Astroff, and to the crowd's astonishment, the student won. What a cool moment for her. I'm sure A.J. wouldn't agree with me on that one. Then it was time for a slam dunk contest. The Tigers' Tamaj Parker Rivera won that portion of the night. He had a few nice throwdowns, and that really got the crowd amped up. But most of the fans were there for one reason, and that was a half-court shot where one student had the opportunity to win $10,000 if they could sink the shot. But it, uh, yeah, it wasn't close, and nobody would win the grand prize. But nonetheless, it was a great time had by everyone in attendance, just like everybody else. I cannot wait for the start of this basketball season. We have to take one final break, but when we come back, we'll preview the Tiger football team's next opponent, the Elon Phoenix. Tiger 411 continues right after this.
virtual wallet can help you be that person who's good with money. See what's free to spend, move money with a slide, save with a shake. Feel good about your decisions. You'll find it on the sidewalks of Little Italy and on the porches in Catonsville. You can see it when friends meet in Mount Vernon. It's pride, pride in our city, pride in our people. That's why MedStar Health is building the most accessible healthcare system in the region to look after everyone from Lutherville to Locust Point. So no matter where you go, no matter who you are, you're never far from MedStar. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sungary, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a, a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl, and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. This is where the legends live waiting for someone with better innovation. From the brand that reinvented the t-shirt comes the Under Armour Speed Form Apollo. This is our rocket ship. Welcome back to Tiger 411. I'm your host, Zach Maskovich. Towson football is coming off a great fourth quarter win over arch rival Delaware two weeks ago. And after a bye week, the Tigers have to prepare for Elon this Saturday, which will be homecoming. While the Phoenix are near the bottom of most statistical categories in the CAA, they do have a pretty good passing attack led by quarterback Mike Quinn, who ranks fifth in the conference in total offense, averaging 206 yards per game. As a def defense, Elon has struggled as they are near the bottom in scoring defense, giving up 30.6 points per game. But in fairness, Towson has struggled to put points on the board as the Tigers only average 17.1 points per contest. But I can throw all the numbers your way all week long, and it doesn't mean a thing as the team still have to get out on the field and play the game. The win would be huge for the Tigers. It would set them up nicely before they have to travel to Villanova, Pennsylvania to take on one of the best teams in the CAA. But we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves as that's still two weeks away. If you can't make it to the game on Saturday, be sure to listen in on the Towson Sports Network as Spiro Marikis and Ron Meehan will have live and free coverage starting at 3.30 with the Coors Light countdown to kickoff. Of course, if you can get to the game, get your tickets on TowsonTigers.com or by calling 1-855-TU-TIGER. We hope to see the U rocking. We have just a few more minutes left in this episode of Tiger 411, but before we go, let's take a look at all of the action that's going on this Halloween week in Tiger Town. That's going to do it for this edition of Tiger 411. Remember, for the latest news on your favorite Tiger teams, be sure to follow them on Twitter at Towson Tigers. And while you're at it, give me a follow at Zach Maskovich. A special thanks to Greg Painter for stopping by the studios for a quick chat. And a special thanks to you for watching this episode of Tiger 411. Once again, I'm Zach Maskovich. Have a good week, and as always, go Tigers! <laughs>